Uh, hello and welcome back to Tucson Tuesday yet again. And uh, this week we're going to keep the ball rolling with uh, some more new, new uh, Tucsons here. This is a TS-214 and don't let that model number fool you because this thing had just very recently released. However, it is using a little bit of their, uh, their older manufacturing sort of stuff. There's a lot of interesting things going on with uh, in here, but let's go ahead and get into it. So this is a TS-214 dash sand i didn't get the um the uh the very uh lightning strike um titanium anodization uh version on there which is uh mostly bronze in color before they uh uh so they do that at a uh, a bit of a lower temperature i think um than some of the others it does blend in with the yellow g10 a, a bit so uh, I do appreciate that, but I wanted to uh, be a little bit more interested in uh, actually using these things, and for that, I generally prefer um, sandblast finish. It gives you a bit more grip. Usually the um, uh, the titanium anodized uh, knives are highly polished, so they end up being a little bit too slick. But uh, alrighty, this is a Jelly Jerry design, um, as the uh, number would uh, probably... Um, be there like uh you know it's right in the middle of that uh, giant chunk of um uh jill jerry two sons from like i don't know the uh the 212 or 213 up through like the 224 or something like that um as far as i know this one doesn't have a name but uh i could be wrong on that but uh there we go we got thumb studs uh they are the um the uh the large wong style ones but with how thick uh, these handle scales are, they don't really stick out. So, uh, that's not really a problem. We also have a flipper tab here. Let's go ahead and open this guy up and we can see some strangeness. Now, um, Jelly Jerry's not really, um, shy when it comes to, uh, having, um, you know, different grinds going on on a knife. And this one is, uh, very much in that vein. Uh, it is kind of interesting. The, uh, the front part of it is, uh, basically... Just like uh, any other flat ground uh, Tucson here, because the uh, the blade stock thickness on here, uh, 3.6, so it's just a little bit thinner than uh, most others. But uh, still, yeah, from here, um, that the uh, the top uh, third, maybe a quarter or something like that, uh, is a standard grind. And behind there, we have this hollow grind here, uh, both of which have a, a very, very pronounced um, coarse satin finish. It's not on the uh, the tang or ricasso sort of area on the blade, so it doesn't really affect action like it has in some others. What is different, though, is this hollow grind here. This hollow grind is immensely thin. Um, really, really amazing. Uh, not like the hollow grinds that Tucson usually does, which um, keeps... Uh, keeps the, uh, the, the thickness behind the edge really, really thick. This is very, very different. Um, and it's kind of interesting. This one, of course, is uh, using 14C28N, not D2. And uh, that's probably important for this knife here. Because of how thin it is behind the edge there, we can hear that if I uh, kind of move my uh, finger off, to, off of it here on the microphone. Here we go at the thicker point. Yeah, uh, this thing is maybe not quite as thin behind the edge as a uh, uh, a straight razor, but it's honestly not that far off, and actually much thicker or thinner behind the edge than that weird TS one eighty five that looks like a straight razor, but uh, doesn't really act or fold like it unfortunately but um yeah so this thing has amazing uh blade or uh slicey geometry going on there uh for me i just did a uh, 17 degree sharpness all along there so we can see the uh the angle is basically the same uh between there and there obviously it comes up a little bit more here because there was more material behind there but same edge angle and uh yeah it was great uh, this did actually take a bit of effort to uh, sharpen to that 17-degree uh, angle there. So, to me at least, that's telling me that the uh, the 14C28N is, um, you know, a, a little bit on the harder side. 
Uh, of course, I mean, 14C is uh, very, very versatile in that it's uh, still quite viable anywhere between 55 and possibly up to maybe 61 on um, on the Rockwell hardened scale, whereas most steels are uh, that that crazy sweet spot is usually 58 to 60 on uh, most of them. And then, you know, some of the um, powder metallurgy steels may be up to 62. And then Magna Cut and Rex 121 and all the uh, the super crazy exotic stuff can get uh, crazy high up there. ZDP 189, for instance, which apparently can go up to like 72, I want to say. Maybe that's right around where... Um, Shoot, I forgot the name of the dang company off the top of my head there. Um, Rock something or other? I heard it, whatever. Rockstead, that was it. Okay. Uh, since they use EDP 189 all the time. But anyway, uh, this uh, still to me feels a little bit on the harder end of uh, 14C28N. Put a little bit more effort into uh, the sharpening than I would with... Um, most other manufacturers, uh, 14C, um, as well as Two Suns as well. So that ends up working out quite well. This is a very, very strange knife in many, many ways. Not least of which is the blade that I just uh, ended up talking about here. But the construction, the uh, the handles, all of that sort of stuff. So this does have uh, titanium embellishments, let's say. We have basically uh, titanium inlays into the uh, the G10 there, and a, and a full titanium backspacer as well, so that's good. But uh, as far as what the blade actually interfaces with, while it does have bearing races in there, is G10, which, uh, yeah, a lot of people um, might not uh, end up particularly liking because they usually um, picture G10 as being a... Uh, a cheap and more antiquated materials um, that's uh, most suited towards like the $20 gonzos and stuff like that. I don't really have that much disdain for G10. Um, I do like it quite a bit. It's a very, very stable and inert material. Uh, fairly heat resistant, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. Um, and much more resilient than micarta, even though, you know, the feeling isn't going to be quite the same. But uh, yeah, so I do like that. Uh, that yellow uh, kind of color, really weird. It's not the first knife that I'm familiar with that uses it. And I'm back. Sorry for that uh, cut. I was basically looking for another knife in that uh, yellow G10. And uh, yeah, it took a little bit, but uh, I ended up finding it here. I was right. It is a Wong design. Uh, this one, of course, also really, really weird. I don't know what it is about yellow G10. Uh, not quite the same saturation of color on these two, but this one is also... Uh, flat, so it has um, that uh, peel ply texture, whereas this is much more smooth and milled. But yeah, also another strange knife, titanium subframe lock with <laughs> clip on the, uh, the show side, all that sort of weird stuff there. Uh, very, very different. Um, as far as I was um, understanding, the, uh, the pocket clip reason for that is uh, not necessarily for it to sit down in your pockets in your pants but much more a pocket or other kind of clippable thing like um a seat belt uh, or uh, molly sort of stuff if you're in the military just something to clip it to not necessarily your pants pocket which is why it's uh tipped down because if it's um you know above where your uh your arms are or something like that much easier to uh, grab that to pull it out rather than to uh, pull it out and turn it around so all right yeah well we covered that that wasn't really uh intended but uh hey there we go and uh always nice to have more than one knife to take a look at <laughs> yeah no call up heavy collar going on here nested steel liner going on in this one so we don't really need a um hardened steel insert or anything like that uh, I have not really seen um, pretty much any company do a, a nested titanium liner. I've seen some titanium linered knives. Um, usually they're on the pretty high end as well. But uh, none of them I've really seen as um, nested into a material. Because, well, at that point, um, you're really relying on the material that it's being inset into. So getting that... Um, additional strength or something like that out of titanium really isn't all that important so it's just adding cost without adding a whole lot of uh, extras pocket clip pretty darn good we have a, a nice wide ramp for it 
Um, it is actually just a little bit hollow on the inside there, uh, but we do have a couple of screws um, that go through that pocket clip. That actually is um, the two screws that are holding the liner in there. Let's see. So how about if I talk a little bit about um, some stats here. I did mention the uh, 3.6 millimeter blade stock thickness on here. This is 4.91 ounces. Uh, it still does have uh, a, a good chunk of uh, titanium. And G10 isn't the lightest material in the world. That's 139 grams. Uh, as far as uh, blade length from uh, basically this bump up here out to the tip, we got 3.66 inches. That's 92.9 millimeters, which is actually um, uh, a great deal longer than what uh, they, they end up um, showing its measurements as uh, on their eBay auctions. I don't know if maybe they're actually uh, measuring from where the uh, the blade edge starts or something like that in those particular instances. I don't know, but uh, this was still a good three or four millimeters longer than what it was listed as, which doesn't bother me all that much, but um, you know, depending on uh, your area and legality and all that sort of stuff, it might matter. And this thing is fairly thick, as we can see here. It's 0 0.67 of an inch, three quarters of an inch, about two thirds. Oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, 17 millimeters. So uh, quite quite thick on here. Um, as far as the ergonomics go, this one's a bit of a weird one here. Um, if you have standard two smaller sized hands, this thing is going to be uh, really really nice and comfortable. Uh, this beak up here actually does kind of um, cramp my hands in particular and kind of pushes it up against the, uh, the flipper tab there. But if you have, you know, normal sized hands, that's not going to be a problem. This does kind of have um, that relief after the beak, which uh, can help. But for me, that ends up pushing me out farther and then I can't actually interface with uh, any of the jimping on this, which is... Um, Nice and sharp and deep uh, crenellations on this guy in particular. So it's uh, it's interesting. This is definitely a larger knife made for people without larger hands. Which, honestly, there's not a, a whole lot of them that are built specifically that way. But this one definitely falls into that camp for me. Uh, but pinch grip ends up uh, resolving a lot of that for me. Um, and trying to do a, uh, saber, um, grip on this guy. I'm also kind of struggling to, uh, actually interface with those, uh, crenellations. Really, it feels like it's much more designed for, uh, that hammer grip, um, as kind of a standard MO for, for this guy in particular here. Um, and because we have a nice, nice arch here, uh, reverse grip is, um, really, really nice and comfortable. And um, the flipper tab doesn't really seem to get in the way. It can interface, but it's not really pushing on anything else than, you know, just skin flappy bits. So it really doesn't bother me there. Uh, I'm guessing that this is considered a finger choil. Um, as with uh, most, excuse me, as with most uh, East Asian uh, kind of designers, they're going to be too small for my fingers, so uh, I just basically ignore it and or treat it like a sharpening foil, and that works out fine. So, yeah, we don't have a, uh, a detent ramp on here. And it does uh, kind of interface with that detent a little bit late, uh, a little bit later than I would personally prefer. But uh, it still ends up working out all right. Thumb studs work out fine for uh, deployment. Flipper tab does as well. And of course, I also like a, uh, a little lighter strike kind of uh, opening situation. I, I prefer that uh, uh, a lot of times on flipper tabs, uh, I will. Um, especially more if I'm um, fiddling with it rather than it just sitting in my pocket for uh, a particular deployment. But let's go ahead and do some uh, blade size comparisons here. There's the uh, the Manix 2XL. And there's the Paramilitary 2, which is obviously a little bit smaller. The, uh, the Military 2 is going to be larger than that for sure. Well, it is. I just don't have one. Um, I got some more knives for uh, blade size comparison. I should probably do those too. There is a Griptilian. 
And the 940. And another crowd favorite, the uh, the bug out there. There we go. The itty bitty little guy, the uh, the elementum. And then another one that's probably appropriate. We got the uh, the good old Ontario Rat Number One, which is uh, pretty darn close as far as um, handle and blade ratio, uh, and even choil, even though this one isn't uh, arched. So yeah, pretty interesting there. So uh, let's go ahead and bring up one gripe here that I have. Uh, and it seems rather deliberate, so I'm not exactly sure exactly what was going on with it. But, um, not completely. But, by and large, we have T6 screws for um, the construction on here. Um, we have essentially a T6 on the, uh, the pocket clip screw, and then both of these guys, uh, which uh, this isn't kind of put together with uh, Chicago screws like you might imagine um since that's uh, kind of the mo with uh, most tucsons and if i remember right yeah and the two screws uh inside there for uh for the uh, the liner there um we do have a a steel cap uh, or not steel it is titanium to match um so you can actually swap the clip on this guy, which is fantastic. And as we can see here, this is actually using two anchor points. Um, it is uh, on the other side as well. It's actually a screw uh, coming through on the other side there. So it's attached on both sides. So very, very strong uh, clip design, which uh, I, I do appreciate. But uh, yeah, it is a little strange that um, they opted to use uh, T6s for most things on there. What is strange is that the uh, the screw, um, the one on the inside for the pocket clip, the one that's not seen from the outside, that one is T8. I don't know. It's a little strange. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Uh, I think I've basically talked about everything um, that I wanted to talk on here. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff that's uh, really, really interesting with the, uh, the blade grinds there, having a very, very nice thin hollow grind which is a little bit out of um, Tucson's normal when it comes to their hollow grinds. Most of them are off fairly thick behind the edge there. And we do have a, a decent amount of um, lock bar access to it as well. So that's great. Uh, with all that being said, though, uh, I do want to uh, go ahead and take this guy apart. Um, for one, because this thing is uh, really just done quite a bit differently than uh, many, many other Tucson's out there. So, yeah, I will definitely go ahead and do that now. I can't really think of anything else that uh, I have missed. So, let's go ahead and start with this and using the uh, T6 driver, which feels weird. But, yeah, very, very long uh, top screw there for the, uh, the pocket clip. But it's still anchored in at the bottom, so you can't really do anything about that until you uh, fully disassemble the knife. Knock, knock, I'm coming in. There we go. So there's that. And then we got one on top. And these uh, essentially match. And then we do have T8s for the pivot on this guy. And that should get me inside there. There we go. There's the uh, the screw for the, uh, the pocket uh, clip on the inside. I did say that one inside there is a T8, not a T6. So, <laughs> a little bit strange there. Um, this isn't something that I'm uh, supremely happy to see in general, is um, a stop pin going directly into um, kind of synthetic materials like that. But G10 is, you know, like I said, much more resilient than uh, Micarta. And a little bit more resilient than carbon fiber when it comes to uh, small little areas like that. So it, in general, that doesn't bother me all that much. It's something that um, does certainly have the possibility of wearing out. But 
much less so than if it was um, doing that into uh, micarta or uh, carbon fiber. So there we go with that. We do have uh, bearing races in there, and certainly makes sense. You don't really want to have a knife riding on G10. It'll just wear that stuff away super, super quick. And then, yeah, we do have the uh, titanium backspacer here. Does have a little bit of a cutout there because the tip is uh, a little bit longer. Glad that was actually thought of. Um, generally because Tucson doesn't really do much in the way of prototyping, so that would have been probably caught during the, um, the CAD phase or something like that uh, before they uh, programmed all the machines to do it. But, uh, yeah, that backspacer here, unlike many others, um, is... Uh, yeah, can't lift it out because it's not on Chicago screws. It's screwed in uh, with these couple of points here. So, yeah, very, very different as far as uh, just construction going. Um, it's not maybe the uh, the absolute first one uh, that's done something like this. I, I do remember seeing one or two others, but they're very far and few between. It's uh, definitely much more in... Um, to some kind of um, construction cookbook, if you will, of uh, using Chicago screws everywhere that they can because, um, well, it just seems to be the way that uh, everything's going. Uh, something that is interesting on here that I did want to uh, cover is uh, the number on this one uh, for the model is TS214, and like a lot of uh, older Tucson's, so most of them um, that uh, generally are old enough to not have the uh, the model number uh, laser printed on the blade. Um, the D-shaped pivot is actually keyed on the lock bar side rather than the show side, which they've changed to with um, almost all newer models. Which, I don't know, to me, makes me think that, uh, well, with the, uh, the number being the TS-214 and uh, all of that sort of stuff, means that this was probably a long time in the making. And uh, I don't necessarily know if that was uh, something that uh, Tucson was working on trying to figure out how to uh, do some of this stuff because it is a little unorthodox for them. Or uh, what? I'm not quite sure on any of that. It's all kind of speculation. Pretty much as it is with uh, virtually everybody. Heck, including even Jelly Jerry and a whole bunch of others who actually work for the company. Well, uh, make designs for the company like him and Mazwan Mokdar and all that sort of stuff. I've, uh, yeah, they are a little bit mysterious in um, communication and uh, just operations and all that sort of stuff. It's a little strange, but uh, yeah, that's probably uh, a good reason why uh, quite a few people like them as well. Just uh, a little bit weird and mysterious and uh, definitely nowhere near as... Um, Kind of out in the open with a whole bunch of their stuff, which uh, does add a little bit of a mystique to it. Also a bit of frustration and uh, wanting to understand some of it, but hey, what are we going to do? Uh, but yeah, that's uh, basically everything I wanted to cover here with the TS-214. Fills in another gap in that uh, number block that um, Jelly Jerry has had. And of course, he's also had some other knives uh, outside of there, like the TS-423 that I'd uh, just recently uh, taken a look at and stuff like that. Pretty interesting knife, especially if you have kind of smaller hands, but you're looking for a, uh, a larger knife. This thing will end up working out pretty darn good for you. The uh, the slicing geometry on it is, um, as far as I can tell, nearly unparalleled. It is ridiculous, but maybe to the point where you might want to baby it a little bit. This, is, of course, is using 14C28N, which is a very, very tough steel an AEBL uh, derivative, derivative or fork uh, sort of thing, which is great if you're going to do something um, very, very thin because it can actually uh, help with that. Um, if you're not using 14C for something like that, maybe 3V or something like that. Much more expensive powder metallurgy process and not stain uh, stainless or anything like that. But still, another very, very tough steel that can um, end up dealing with a lot of that. So... Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, that's all I really have to say about it. It's a very, very interesting model. One that might not quite fit my hands, but probably will for the general public. So I just kind of want to throw that out there. And, um, you know, absolutely love seeing another model that, um, well, you do have to uh, do a full teardown on it to uh, swap the pocket clip. 
but you can. And uh, that's a very, very rare thing for Tucson to do. Uh, but alrighty, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.